Hi everyone. So I've written a bit of an essay um, is on a topic that I couldn't just sort of do off the top of my head. Um, I had to write it down exactly to make sure I got it right. And I've put it in this Google Doc and I'm going to read it to you. Uh, if you don't want to hear me read it, feel free to uh, just get the link um, to this Google Doc in the description box. And I'll also put a link to a video on the same kind of topic that David Benjamin did back in August. And um, yeah, he does a really good job of explaining this as well. So here we go. Salvation has always been a matter of justification by faith. Many Christians are under the misunderstanding that Jews in the Old Testament, in Old Testament Israel were justified by the law. They think that they attempted to follow the law and made sacrifices for their failures and as long as they did these things they would go to heaven. This is where Christian legalists get the idea that they must follow the law and commandments or do's and don'ts and repent of their failures and those activities combined will justify them. That is law keeping, not faith. Also another misunderstanding that many Christians have is that because Jesus kept the law, we by faith, we by faith in him are vicarious law keepers. This suggests that we are justified by law through faith, which is not true. I as a Gentile was never under the law. I was a law unto myself. My conscience was my law. So Romans 2, 14 to 15 says, For when the Gentiles which have not the law, do by, the, by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the, the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or excluding, oh, sorry, while ac accusing or ex else excusing one another. Sorry, messed that up. Jesus was righteous because he was the Son of God, God himself, not because he kept the law. The law witnessed his righteousness because the law is a reflection of God's righteousness, Romans 3.21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Jesus in his earthly ministry gave the correct interpretation of the law, the spirit in which it was given, not agreeing with the way the religious leaders had interpreted the law. The righteous standard of the law that he gave witnessed his righteousness, his perfection. The law was only ever given to increase transgression and to be a schoolmaster to lead people to Christ. Romans 4.15 Because the law worketh wrath, or wrath. Galatians 3.24.25 Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. 1 Corinthians 15.56 The strength of sin is the law. Romans 3.20 For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 5.20 Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound. Galatians 3.19 Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. The law cannot be used for justification. It cannot give life. Galatians 3.21 For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Galatians 3.11-12 but no man, well, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Romans 3.20 Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Abraham was justified by faith, 
And the law did not disannul the promise given to Abraham in order that Gentiles could be saved. Galatians 3.14-19 That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not, oh, he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant which was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression, transgressions, till the seed should come by, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels as the hand of a mediator. So you can see that the method of salvation was by faith in the time of Abraham, but then, when the law was given, it did, it did not change justification by law-keeping and sacrifices. It was always by faith in the promise, the promise made to the seed who is Jesus. Individuals living in Israel under Old Testament law needed to have faith in the promise of Jesus, which was reflected in the sacrifices they made for sin. Those sacrifices never took away sin. Hebrews 10.1 For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Hebrews 10.4 For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. The sacrifices merely pointed to Jesus and it was their faith in the promise which was to come that justified them, not their attempt at law-keeping plus sacrifices. Law was also for national blessings. Deuteronomy 30, 16 In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. As a Gentile, I am not justified by law because Jesus kept it and I have faith in him and vicariously keep the Jewish law because he did. No, only an already might righteous man can, could keep the law and who is righteous? Only God. Jesus did not achieve righteousness through the law. He was righteous because he was God. He never sinned because he was God. So the righteousness that he imputed to me was not a product of the law, but of the divine nature of God. My sin apart from the law was imputed to him and his righteousness, the righteousness of God, was imputed to me. I have been released from the law of my conscience, not from the Jewish law, because I was never under the Jewish law, because I am not a Jew living in Israel. If justification by faith was only available because Jesus kept the law, then he only died for Jews living under the law in Israel. But we know he died for the sins of the whole world. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If a Gentile tries to keep Jewish law in order to be justified by it, they will be judged by it. Gentiles not following, sorry, Gentiles not trying to follow Jewish law will be judged according to their own law, which is their conscience. Sorry, that shouldn't be a question mark, it's a statement. I'll change that. Romans 2.12 For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. 
This is a very complicated topic, but understanding it will help to free you from any subtle legalism that you may still be under. It takes time for us to untangle ourselves from legalism. Many grace believers are still under it without realizing. We were never under Jewish law and as Gentiles or even modern, modern Jews, through faith in Jesus, we are justified by faith in his death, burial and resurrection, not justified by vicarious Jewish law keeping through faith in the only law, in the only law keeper that ever existed. He kept the law because he is God and he gave the law but as a shadow of the perfection of God. But the law only ever pointed to Israel's need for salvation through the sacrifice of Jesus, their Messiah. As Abraham was justified by faith, so were all believers since then, whether living in Israel under the law be before Jesus died or after Jesus' death. Even David believed in justification by faith and not of works. Romans 4, 3 to 8. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Knowing that we are justified by faith means Jesus has given us everything freely with no expectation of anything in return from us. We are free from law of any kind, so are not obligated to do anything. With our new nature, as our minds are aligned with our regenerated spirit, we naturally do things pleasing to him because our spirit cannot sin. This is not law keeping. This is Jesus' life, is Jesus' life giving spirit living through us. We learn to have no confidence in the flesh and live by faith. Galatians 2, 20 to 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, or come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. I hope this blesses you, and remember to have a look in the description box for links to this and uh, David Benjamin's video on um, the similar topic. Alright, see you later.